Hello and welcome to my overview of the DNA Extraction Lab. In this lab, I will be discussing the concepts behind DNA extraction. The first step involved in this lab is to carefully cut up the onion in a solution of distilled water until it reaches a consistency of applesauce. We do this to break the cell walls of the, cell, of the plant cells so that our DNA extraction can, solution can enter the cell and actually extract DNA. We also do this to increase the surface area of the onion so more DNA can be extracted. Once the onion mixture is ready, it's added to a test tube with the extraction solution, a mixture consisting of shampoo, baking soda, and salt. This solution breaks apart the cell and puts DNA into solution. The salt in the solution creates a concentration gradient, which promotes water to diffuse into the cell through osmosis. The higher water pressure within the cell causes the cell, cell wall to rupture. Additionally, the salt neutralizes the negative charge in the phosphate in DNA, so that the DNA is still water-soluble, but will precipitate a solution in the presence of alcohol. The salt also causes lipids and proteins to precipitate a solution, which we'll filter out later. The purpose of the shampoo in the solution is to release the DNA from the cell, and it does this because of its amphipathic nature, which allows it to dissolve hydrophobic molecules, such as the head of the phospholipid and the phospholipid bilayer into polar solvents such as water. Because of this, it breaks apart the nuclear membrane, allowing DNA to leave the nucleus. Uh, but it's also able to dissolve the cell membrane, so the DNA can also leave the cell altogether. The purpose of baking soda in the DNA extraction solution is to act as a buffer, and what a buffer does is it restricts any change in pH. So the purpose of this in the extraction solution is to keep the DNA within its, uh, within its acceptable range of pHs so as not to damage it. After adding the extraction solution to the onion mixture, we filtered off any solid particles that remained. These solid particles included unwanted compounds such as lipids and proteins, as well as large chunks of the onion. Since DNA is soluble in water, it is able to pass through the filter without issues. This step ensures a level of purity in our DNA solution before we proceed further. Before shaking, the onion and DNA extraction mixture was a clear solution with some onion particles suspended within it. After shaking though, the mix was incredibly frothy, most likely due to the shampoo within the solution. After filtering the onion solution, I noted a slight yellow color to the filtrate, as well as a thick white substance that was caught within the filter. I suspect that this substance is a mixture of lipids and proteins that were dropped out of solution earlier by the salt. When cold isopropyl alcohol was added to the DNA solution, it forced the DNA to precipitate out of solution. The DNA precipitates out of the solution as a result of the salt and the alcohol. The sodium ions in the salt neutralize the charges on the sugar phosphate backbone of the DNA, reducing its solubility in polar substances. Once it's introduced to the alcohol, it's forced out of solution and forms solid strands which we see as a white clump where the alcohol touched the DNA solution. Upon removal of some of the precipitate, we noted a few nice strands of DNA. These strands of DNA were very thin, about a half millimeter in diameter, and had a clearish white color to them. We then tested our strands of DNA for acidity using blue linus paper. DNA, or deoxyribonucleic acid, is obviously acidic, hence the name. Yet, our litmus paper actually failed to indicate this. Uh, it remained blue, it did not turn red. The, base, the basic nature of our DNA was likely caused by the, uh, a leftover of sodium bicarbonate, or baking soda, that we had in our DNA extraction solution. Perhaps if we had washed our DNA with alcohol, we could have received a more accurate result.